There are some lines that should not be crossed, and some just need painted around the armor. Today I want to show off panel lining. When it comes to sci-fi minis, a lot of them have a lot of flat paneled armor. They're pretty much a canvas for painting in so many different ways. One of those ways is just to give the panel an outline. Should be a simple concept, right? Well, One Page Rules this month has a Saurian star host Gecko Commander. And well, he's got himself a lot of panels, so he'll make a great example model for this technique. I printed two of them though, and one of them I'm going to take to the extreme, finishing it with nothing but panel lining. The very basics of panel lining are to use a small brush and to draw solid lines on the very edges of squared objects. I'll just use some white with a little bit of slow dry medium to help make sure the paint stays moist long enough, just to make the examples easy for you to see. The way I like to do it is to use the tip of the brush, just to follow along the edge of the surface. Not necessarily just the sharp edge either, but the flat edge too, going slowly and with a few strokes if I need to. The side of the tip of the brush is actually the sweet spot to get this to be a nice, perfect thin line. But that's not always what we want, which I'll explain later. When it comes to really small edges, it might be too difficult to line the edge on both sides separately. You'd have to have really good paint flow and brush control, which for various reasons I don't in this case. So instead, I'll line the whole edge as a solid piece. When it comes to plates and parts that disappear into other things, we only have to get the edges that are along the free edge. So these don't always have to fill in a whole shape, but just the edges that have outward facing corners. And when it comes to being meticulous, your best tool for keeping everything simple is angles. Don't be shy to flip the miniature upside down or flip it around to make sure that you can follow the edge in a way that's comfortable to your hand. If you prefer to stroke right to left, orient the model so that all your strokes are in that direction. Panel lining is something that's usually done in conjunction with other techniques, which I'll be showing off in the second part of this video, but that doesn't mean it can't be used as a technique all on its own. In that case, it can end up being like a type of layering. Start with a flat, opaque base color. Something vibrant is nice because this doesn't tend to have any shading involved. And we can use a large brush for this first lining as long as it still has a decent point, because it wants to start with a thick outline. I'll just be using the same teal I used before adding the blue so it's a bit lighter, but then I just want to follow the outline of the shapes again, sometimes going over them twice just to make sure that those lines are thick around the edge and even color. Then with just a little bit of white added, I'll go back to the smaller brush and do the outline again. This time, the line is thinner, and gives us a stepped look to the panel lining. There are advanced ways to get lighting with this too, but lining the whole thing all the way around with these two steps of color is a great way to practice getting these nice edge highlights and get some really standout armor at the same time. Of course, you wouldn't panel line everything all of the time when going for realism and or speed. So while it does look neat and has its place, the real question is, when is it used and why? Well, let's start with a bit of a scenario. You've speed painted a bunch of troops with a method that shall not be named, but now it's the commander's turn. You've done a base, you zenithled some gray, and then you dry brushed a white. Well, this would actually be a good time to add some panel lining. Dry brushing is great for getting the sharp edges of a model, but to make it even, some panel lining will really help fill in some of the gaps around the dry brushing and thicken the lines left around the panels, making them fuller and more distinct as well as less dusty. So that when putting on the shading layer, in my case, it's dipping ink, but of course this could be any of the big names, it'll feel just a little more crisp along those edges, 
and keep more of the deep contrast, which should help out this leader bean stand out from the crowd on the table. The other way it could be useful is to do it afterwards instead. Use the normal method all the way up to the wash, but once that dries, put some on the palette and mix in some white. Use this to then panel line and create a really distinct contrast that isn't covered by a wash at all, which kind of like the first part of this video, really makes those plates stand out, but have a bit of a gradient to the background. Another place I like to use panel lining is after a wet blend on a multi-surface area. Since it's easy to get a wet blend on a larger area like his shield here by treating the many surfaces as a single surface, I can get a really nice blend from one color to another, or from a light to a dark, quite easily and quickly. But what it's missing is some of that separation now. This is where the panel lining can give that separation, by taking the original light color, not even mixing it with white or anything, and giving all the panels an outline. What happens is the gradient made with the original web blend becomes individualized for each panel, but without causing a reflection edge. Instead, it's more like a halo made up of the colors of the object, which makes it a much more harmonious outline. That's not to say more highlights can't be added after, but in this case, I'm just using it to create separation within a gradient. Which kind of goes hand in hand with the final way I like to use panel lining, and that's to create a boundary for glazes and blending. First, of course, I'll start with a dark base coat, just so things are nice and even. But for my mid-range color, what I'll do is start with an outline around the panel. What this does is give me a boundary to glaze and highlight within, so that I don't have to be that meticulous with the edges while I'm doing it. I'll get my glaze by just thinning out that half color I made the outlines in, then use that to pull up over the panel, about halfway up, less or more depending on how much highlight I want to give this. But by having that outline taken care of, it gives me a spot to lift my brush and allow the paint to pool, which can always be a bit of a struggle to know where to do that with a glaze. After a few layers, it should be nice and smooth, but still have that outline. So to break it up a bit, I'll then do a highlight, mostly like I would the full panel line, but let it break up about where the glaze starts to end as well. This is how we get light into panel lining, by not actually completing the shape but just the edges that would catch the most light. In the tradition of what I've been doing with my star host lizards, I've decked this guy out in teals, greens, and purples to go with a water or aqua theme to him. But everything from the armor to the scales to the weapon just got a few colors of panel lining, other than the glow. That was an extra just for me. But we can see that even as a technique all on its own, it gives a lot of contrast to the edges of sci-fi armor and makes every panel individual from each other, so we can pick out all the details within those flat surfaces. I'm not gonna lie, it is time consuming, but when it comes to getting sci-fi armor just right, sometimes all it needs is some lining. Please subscribe if you like this video. And check the link in the description to my Discord where I talk all sorts of nonsense about miniatures painting, provide critique on paint jobs, and occasionally stream.